So you might think that making games is hard. Like, even harder than being a computer science major trying to get a job right now. But the truth is, it's easier than it ever has been, and it's only getting easier. Huh, that was easy. And one of the reasons I really love the Godot engine is because of how powerful, easy, and intuitive it is to use. And one of the most powerful nodes is the one I use to make my cutscenes. And that node is the animation player. You could almost make an entire game using this one node plus a little scripting, and in this case, that's exactly what we're going to do to make a cutscene. And by the way, I'm currently in the process of porting my entire game from Godot 3 to Godot 4, while upgrading nearly every aspect of the game at the same time. And since the Steam page is already up, I would really appreciate it if you could wishlist Outer Gleam right now. Anyway, there's basically two ways to make cutscenes, regardless of whether you're an indie game first-timer trying to make two pixels move across your screen, or you're a AAA studio slowly falling into the black hole of microtransaction-filled corporate soullessness. One, you can pre-record something and play the cutscene as a video, or two, you can do all your cutscenes in real time, in engine, using animations. Basically, the key difference is that if you have a long cutscene you record and play back as a video, you're more limited by the file size that you end up with. But, if you use animations and do it completely real time and in engine, you can make Hideo Kojima proud and pretty much make your cutscenes as long as you want. In my case, I like to keep everything in engine so I don't have to worry about video size or length. I can just focus on telling the story that I want. Okay, so in our scene here, let's first add our animation player node. Then let's add a script to the root node for the scene. I like to get my code out of the way quickly, so let's write the few lines of code that we actually need. First, we need to connect the animation player finished signal to the script we just created. Depending on what you want to do once your cutscene is finished, here's where your code will differ from mine, but in my case, I just want to fade out the scene, then return to the title screen, and I can do both of those things using code from other scenes I've already created. And that's it! That's all the code I need, and you might need even less. Next up, you want to make sure your scene contains all the elements you need for your animation. In my case, I'm going to add a camera 2D and a couple of characters and elements from my game. Now that I have all my scene elements, let's animate the cutscene. So I'm going to keep it pretty simple here, I just want both of my characters to enter the camera view, then I want to do a close-up on each character, then I'll zoom the camera back out and end the cutscene. Alright, the animation is done, so let's go ahead and play the cutscene. I added the sound effects during editing, but you get the idea. You can move stuff around your scene, manipulate the camera any way you want, and once your animation is finished, you can call any code that you want and return to your gameplay. It's a pretty easy way to add cinematic moments to your game, and you're really only limited by your own creativity and imagination when it comes to animating the scene itself. You can even animate huge numbers of objects on screen at once just by selecting them all, adding keyframes for each object simultaneously, and then by playing around with the timing for each keyframe. It's really up to you. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So get out there and make some extremely long in-game cutscenes really easily. And if you want to see all the cinematics I'm adding to my game, Outer Gleam, you can wishlist it on Steam right now. Thanks, and see you in the next one.